Okay, we are live, I do believe. Let's see, I've got one chat. I'm not going to be able to see. Uh, yeah, if Debbie mutes, if you can tell her how to do that, I'm not going to be able to see the chat um, tonight the way my setup is. So, all right, so tonight is, um, uh, what is it, the 12th of November, and this is the Center for Divine Awakening a weekly inspiration. And we're talking about awakening tonight. What is awaken? What does it mean to awaken? And so I was talking to our people who are live on Zoom a minute ago and uh, trying this trying this for tonight. Try, I'm, it's stretching. I'm going way beyond my comfort zone. So I have live on Zoom so I can communicate with people. And I have live on my Facebook page my eliza hyphen divine awakening facebook page so we've got them running both so we'll see if it works and i have to turn my fan on because it's really hot here and hopefully you'll get uh facebook will get a little bit of the shadow of the fan anyway so oh and here comes nancy awesome there she is Hi, we are just getting started. So for those of you who are um, live on Zoom, let's just take a minute to just do a check-in and then I'll probably repeat what you say uh, for the Facebook Live because we're trying, we're just trying it. We're just going to see if it works tonight to do it like this. So how are you doing? Do you have any brilliant grand ideas about the Virtual Center for Divine Awakening, or what's up for you tonight? So let's start with um, let's start with Michaela. check in how are you doing have you thought about the idea were you what did anything move in you this week with the idea of the center for divine awakening or the things some of you were here last week so if any of the things that moved in or through you since then Yeah, we can do that. Uh, we can do that privately and we can do that, you know, I'm going to give a, a kind of a little talk tonight and then open it up for conversation as well. Um, so, uh, and then also you and I can touch base either later on or in the next couple of days. Absolutely. That would be a good thing for us to do. Yeah. How about you, Becky? What's moving? Okay.
yes. Awesome. Awesome. I am uh, working on my uh, next book. Uh, it, it's the manuscripts due on uh, Wednesday of this week, and I'm still fussing with it. But the chapter I was working on today is entitled Destination or Journey. So um, it sort of speaks to exactly what you just said. Yeah. So um, I'm not sure this check-in is working very well on the Facebook live portion, but I also am aware we don't have anybody watching live. So um, I would like to just hear uh, a word or two from Nancy and Debbie Bo. So uh, Nancy, how are you doing? I know you just flew in the door too. Hey, I feel like Michaela. I just um, honestly ran in from uh, a lot of work. We have our own uh, business and had activities this afternoon and I totally, I looked down at my phone and it's like, oh my God, I totally forgot. We have pizza in the oven. I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> so my hunger may, may paint whatever's going on. And if I go off screen, it's because I'm taking a bite. But, um, you know, this has been a powerful uh, week. Um, Becky, I, I, I have the, your reminder of your, your dog is had to help my daughter say goodbye to my grand dog and it's, it's been very helpful for everybody to, to let these, um, these fur babies have to move on to their neck so I send you a lot of heart hugs in that way and, um, you know I am I don't know but right now I am physically tired I'm mentally pumped because our business is going in the right direction and I'm utterly excited and and yet, at the same time, you know how you're so excited, but you're very, it's very centered. The center is oh, nice, nice. Uh, and it's, it just feels like so many of the things that we've been working on for ever, inside, outside, it was all kind of start, starting to come together in a, in a way I can, I had envisioned it. So nice. So I'm just feeling celebratory without being giddy, if that makes any sense. Fully grateful to spirit and, and all of this work, knowing that every it took everything to get to yet another moment of uh, feeling like I'm doing exactly what I'm designed to do. Is that it? That's my check-in, I think. I think, well, just lean into that, doing exactly what I'm designed to do. I mean, isn't that isn't that what we're looking for, right? Yeah, I had I no idea it. that was going to come out. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. great. Thanks. And uh, Debbie, how are you doing tonight? I know it's late in your world, but I'm glad that you're here. She's muted. Okay, she's muted. Can you unmute? Yep. Not quite. All right. Let me see if I can. Uh, I have to go over here. Let me unmute you. Hold on just a second. I think I can do it from here. I have so many screens open, I'm not sure I can, but, uh, okay. oh, there you are, good, there you are. Boy, everybody looks great, but I'm kind of wore out from cleaning house today. Okay. <laughs> Let me see it. We can see you, we can hear you. Okay. Yeah. I'm just looking how to work with it. The, the sound is a little um, funny on my end. Getting ready for work tomorrow and uh... okay well I'm glad you're here what we'll do um, I'm, I'm gonna give a little talk sort of piece and then I'm gonna shut down the Facebook live and then we'll have uh, time for some more discussion and we'll all be within the sort of hour 45 minutes to an hour time frame so um, just glad you're here Open your mind, open your heart, and simply receive. And, and Steve, do you want to offer just a hello or a brief check-in? I know you just flew in too. Yeah, you, Steve. Yeah, Steve. I just, 
Hello. I just got into it. Sorry. Check in. I'm doing pretty good. You know, it's been a full weekend and uh, uh, had a good day today. Uh, so, um, you know, and the clock caught me by surprise. Right? Yeah. Caught me by surprise, too, <laughs> actually. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wait. I gotta go. <laughs> All right. Well, I themed. Um, I themed tonight. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna. I'm gonna give a little um, talk because that's sort of my intention. And we are live on Zoom. And I've checked in with everybody who's live on Zoom in this moment. And we're also live on my business page on Facebook. I want to just speak into that for a moment because my intention, which is ever evolving, but my intention with this Center for Divine Awakening is that the Sunday nights are, are really set up um, to be a, uh, I guess a talk, I don't really have a better word yet, but I guess a, a talk and inspiration that then can go really wide and global. And I wanted to do it live on Facebook um, for a number of reasons. And I wanna do it live on Zoom so that we can be in connection and we can communicate and have our discussion. So Facebook won't be involved in the discussion. So I think from this moment forward, we might, if we, don't, if we do a check-in at all, we'll do it at the end or we'll do it after we go off Facebook Live. It worked tonight because there's nobody on live, so that's perfect. <laughs> but, um, you know, just sort of adjusting and floating and flowing through this uh, very beginning portions, the beginning getting set up in the uh, Center for Divine Awakening. And then, of course, um, all of you, I believe, most of you at least, who are live on Zoom are becoming part of the founder founding member circle. And then that will um, kick off um, very soon with a monthly class and a monthly meditation in addition to this weekly. But it's really you that um, will help to form and develop and tweak as we go so that we can really make a bigger impact so that it becomes not just this circle of six, which is beautiful and wonderful, but really becomes this, you know, bigger movement that I, that I feel in my heart that, that we were talking to last week and Michaela was speaking into and, and other people were echoing. So I wanted to, um, uh, start by reading the card. I pulled a card. These are Chris Carr cards and they're very beautiful. Can you see it? It's, oh, it's, the words on it are make waves. And it's a whale, I think a whale, tail flying through the water. And the back of the card, which is very brilliant, says, well, I pulled it for the Center for Divine Awakening, right? And I pulled it for me, but I pulled it for us. And here's what it says. Make waves. <sighs> Take a breath. Like, ah! Right? It says, it's your turn to make a splash and rock a few creaky boats. Don't be afraid to get wet. You may fail. You may look foolish. or You may make people think in a new way. Every great trailblazer and change maker make, made waves. You're no different. And when I pulled that a few hours ago, I thought, wow, how, how perfect is that? Because of the vision that we hold, because of the intention that we hold. And my bold stand, the whole reason for this Center for Divine Awakening is really to hold for the possibility, but not only the possibility, but the reality of the world awakening, one soul at a time. I'm going to see if I can mute everybody. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do that. Hey, Debbie, can you mute yourself again, please? I'm getting some feedback back and forth. Thanks. And maybe it's me because I have the two mics open, but hopefully. Anyway, so my bold stand, my whole purpose for being right now is a stand for awakening. And I thought, well, what does that even mean? You know, what is that? I know what it means to me. 
But way back in 2007, I created what's called an alternative ministry within the context and the umbrella of the, of the unity movement, it was, and it's called Divine Awakening. So I've been working under the umbrella of Divine Awakening for 10 years. How it got to be 10 years, I have no idea. But that idea of awakening has been with me for way longer than that. That's why the title came to me, right? That's why the, the, I named my ministry that. 10 years ago, but for me right now, awakening is not only our possibility or our opportunity, but it's really become our responsibility. And awakening to me is to, to move in a quantum leap from where we are as a humanity to where we yearn to be as a humanity. And so in the simplest words, humanity right now is living in a sense of separation. We are historically, we believe, we live like we are separate from. Now that um, goes back eons and it's just part of who we are. But, but according to the science of conscious evolution and the science of quantum mechanics and the science of awakening and the science of uh, David Hawkins' work, I forget what he calls his work, but this, and, and spiral dynamics, and all of those different paradigms and all of those different frameworks, we are in a place, we are at a cusp, we are on the verge of making a quantum leap. For me, that quantum leap is awakening. It is going from our humanity into a full awareness of our divinity, a full awareness that we are one, that we are one with our own higher self, that we are one with spirit by whatever name you call it, I don't care what you call it, that we are one with that which is greater than us. Call it God, call it source, call it creation, call it the universe, call it spirit. We are one with all. And when we realize that oneness, we will also realize that we are one with all people. And so some of the things we see in the world today, we see the hate, we see the violence, we see the discrimination, we see the discrepancy, we see the me versus them, the us versus us, them versus us, me versus you. We see um, lack and limitation. We see a disparity between those who are healthy and unhealthy, those who are rich and those who are poor. All of that will be evened out. Now, will that happen this year? Likely not. But every person who awakens, every person who takes a step along the awakening journey, every person who is on this journey is coming into a place that is pure love. That is the knowing, not just the mental knowing, but the integration, the embodiment of ourselves as a soul, as a spirit, as one with all humanity. My stand is that it is time and you are the one and we are the ones that will make the difference in the world. Because when we realize this, when we step into this, when we integrate this, everything changes. Everything changes. Our perspective changes. The way we see life changes. The way we interact with life changes, everything changes. And so what is this awakening? It's, it's a coming home to ourself in a way that we've never done before. It's a returning to the oneness of spirit in a way that we've never done before. And even when we've had moments of bliss and moments of awakening and moments of expansion, those are all beautiful and those are all brilliant and those are all necessary. But the awakening I'm talking about is coming to a place where we live in that place now and now and now. And so if we back out a little bit and we go way back in time and we think about the time before we knew we were separate, before we believed in the illusion of separation, before we had the experience of humanity, which includes separation up until this now point, up until this moment, up until now. We go way back and spirit and our awakened self and our divinity 
vibrates at a very high frequency. And in order, now there's lots of theories and I could go on and on, but let's just keep it real simple for tonight. So in order to come into human experience, right, from spirit into human experience, whether that is the beginning of many, many lifetimes or this lifetime, but in order for the high vibration of pure spirit to experience humanity, that high vibration had to get dense. That high vibration had to lower itself to fit into the density. And so there's lots of people talking about this now. And my favorite author right now is Paul Selig. It's S-E-L-I-G. And he wrote a book called, he's written lots of books, but the first one is um, Word, I think it's called I Am the Word, or Word, I Am Word, or I Am Word. Paul Selig, Word, I Am Word, or I Am Word. Anyway. He, he really talks about the awakening process. He doesn't use the same language that I use necessarily, but he's, his basic premise, the foundation for all of his books and all of his work is that all we have to do to awaken, my words, not his, all we have to do to awaken is to raise our vibration up to meet that vibration of, he uses Christ consciousness, I use awakened one, raise our own vibration up to come into alignment with that higher vibration. And so this, this um, sentence that I read actually this morning says this, our spirit, which vibrates at a high frequency, must descend into the heart of the matter so that we can fully experience what it means to be human and the incredible gifts waiting for us. What a joy to realize that our flesh, our body, our humanity, our experience on this planet is sacred, not sinful. That we are whole, not broken. That we are loved and loved and lovable, not unlovable. That we are worthy that we are complete, that we are in alignment of exactly where we're supposed to be. And I believe that we are the ones because we're called, because you're here with me tonight. We are the ones. And the more that we awaken to the truth, the more that we land in our heart center, the more that we access our deeper, wider, wiser spiritual heart, the more that we can impact the world and the more that we impact the world, the more chance the world has to awaken. Imagine this. Imagine this. Lean in and imagine with me a world that is awakened. A world that has gone from the first tier to the second tier. The world that has gone, made the leap from separation to oneness. Imagine a world that is filled with love and compassion and kindness where we know, not just with our heads, but with our beings, that every word we utter impacts the entire world, impacts the souls in the third world country across the world who don't have enough to eat, but who know love. Imagine that we are a world that is awakened, that we have a grass root from the core of our beingness, from our greater, higher perspectives, we have leadership. And so our governments have changed, right? Our leadership has changed and our leadership, imagine, just let your mind expand into an infinite possibility, into a possibility that we would have in our lifetime, a leadership that works for the good for all people, that we would have a world that works for all. I've recently connected uh, again with the AGENT organization. It's A-G-N-T. Their website is A-G-N-T dot today. AGENT dot today. No H's or, or T's or P's or W's. Just A-G-N-T dot today. And they are, uh, it's called Association for Global New Thought. And about 20 years ago, I was playing with them and I would go to their conferences and I would follow them and I would be a part of them a little bit, but it is a conglomeration of all the new thought denominations, for lack of a word, better word, for all the new thought leadership. And we are coming together, boldly together, 
Hashtag boldly together, coming together to take a stand for, not against, to take a stand for love, for equality, for humanity, for humanity. No matter who you love or who you worship or what color your skin is or what country you live in or what side of any, any, any line you might stand on across all lines, we stand boldly together. When I was at their rally last month, I was struck by the similarities to what they say, to what they are standing boldly together for, with what I stand for, with a world awakened, a world that works for all, even though we still might use different language. So boldly together, Agent Today is taking a stand actually for spiritual activism for social activism in a way that unity, which is my background, has never done before. I find it extremely exciting. We're bypassing the political conversations and standing in the moral and spiritually active, active, anyway, you got it, right? We're standing together for oneness, for love, for compassion, for kindness, for peace. And so what can you do today? What can you do today? What can you do today? They asked us that question. And um, within a couple of days, my friend Randy posted on Facebook. I'm just so moved by this. He posted this little story. He was in, he lives in sort of downtown-ish Kansas City, if there's a downtown-ish Kansas City. Hey, he was walking through a, a neighborhood that's a little bit rough. I'm not sure why he was there, but he was there. And he went into a Burger King for lunch. Now, no judgments, right? We can make no judgments in this world that works for all. But as he went into the Burger King, he noticed that there was a man who was digging through the dumpster. It was very apparent. He was digging for the scraps, digging for the food, digging, digging for anything he could find. And so being inspired by this boldly together, being inspired by made a difference to that one. Made a difference to that one. I don't mean that one, you know, less than personally, but that one, that, that relates to a story about a little boy throwing um, uh, starfish back into the ocean uh, after a storm. And the old man said, you can't hardly save all of them. And he threw another one and said, made a difference to that one. So back to Randy, and he, so he approached this man. He said, would you, are you hungry? And the man, yeah, you know. And he said, will you be my guest for lunch and come on in? And uh, he said, I can't go in there. They won't let me in. Anyway, big old long story, and they ended up going in. And the employee said, this man, can't, he can't be in here. And Randy said, uh, he's my guest. And if he has to leave, I leave too, and I'll never be back. And they said, okay, well, whatever. And so he went up and he ordered. He invited the man to order whatever it was he wanted. And he did, and they, they packed it to go. He said, no, we're going to eat here. And he goes, he cannot eat in. He needs to get out. And he said, he is my guest, and you have tables here, and we will eat here. And, and then the um, manager came over. They're, they were given their food, and they sat down at a table, and, they, and he invited him to leave again. And Randy said to this manager, he said he was shaking in his boots a little bit by this point. He said, we stay. And then the manager kind of backed off a little bit. He said, okay, he eats and then he goes. Eat, finish your meal, and then go. And there were other people around, and they started coming up to Randy and this man, thanking him for taking a stand, thanking him for seeing this man. Then they, they finished their food and they left, and, and the man said to Randy, makes me weep. Thank you for seeing me. Thank you for seeing me. And it makes me weep because I think about how many times I've walked by the apparently hungry person at the door of the fast food restaurant not wanting to engage. And that's the exact thing that needs to change for, for all of us. And so I invite you because you're here tonight, I invite you to consider how can you be a stand today, well, it's late in the evening on a Sunday evening, so maybe not today, but tomorrow or the next day or this week for somebody in kindness, in compassion, 
in love. It can be as simple as offering a smile or a kind word to a clerk in a store. It can be as profound as inviting the homeless man in to eat with you at the restaurant. It can be anything in between. And I'm not going to tell you what it is because you'll know. And so awakening from a less spiritual standpoint and more practical standpoint is living love. It is living kindness. It is living compassion for all people. No matter what they look like or smell like. No matter what judgment you might have for them or of them or against them. No matter what. And I believe in my bones that when we, and I mean we, I mean me, and we begin acting differently from a new place of being, right? Because it's the beingness first. Who are we being? If we're being love, if we're being oneness, if we're being kindness and compassion, and then from that place, doing. From that place, if we are awakening, we are committed to raising our own vibration. From where we are, just a step up. From where we are in any given day, a step up. It's not that you can be in despair today and in bliss tomorrow. It doesn't normally work that way. Now, once in a while, it will. But it is a journey of raising our vibration from wherever we are, just a step up. One step up. One step up. Making a difference to one person and one person and one person every single day. And making a difference to one person could be your prayers. It could be your meditation. It could be your business. It could be your work. It could be a phone call. It could be a generosity on the highways, right? Letting somebody in on the busy roads. It could be holding open a door. It can be anything at all. And I believe in my heart of hearts that what we're doing here at the Center for Divine Awakening will impact the world in a really big way. And maybe not tomorrow or the next day, but when we stand together, and this is about virtual community, when we stand together, we can make a bigger impact. And when we make a bigger impact, we shine our light brighter. And when we shine our light brighter, our vibration is higher. And when our vibration is higher, we shine our light brighter. But it is time to quit hiding. It is time to quit playing small. It is time to be the love that you are here to be. And so take a breath. At some point I saw somebody on the Facebook Live. If you happen to be on the Facebook Live, just shoot a comment and let us know you're here because we can't see who you are or if you're still here or anything at all. If you happen to be on the Facebook Live at this moment and you want to come join the conversation because in a moment we're going to um, switch to a conversation and on the Zoom, which is open up right now, let me just put the, the number in here real quick. Uh, I should have done this before, but this is all learning the uh, flow of technology. All right, I'm going to go ahead and push that on there, post that on there. And so take a breath, take a breath, take a break. What does it mean to awaken? What does awakening mean? What does it mean to you? Why are you here? Hey, Vivian's on online. Vivian, hop on over and go, go open up Zoom and punch in that number and come join us online. You'll see some of your friends. Love to see you over there. What does awakening mean to you? How is this conversation impacting you? Now I'm going to go ahead and shut down the Facebook Live and stop the recording so that we can open up conversation and we'll spend as much time as we want to in the conversation uh, still being in a timely manner, so 10 or 15, 20 minutes if it goes that far. So let me shut down the Facebook Live. I'm going to finish that.